First problem says a person five feet tall is walking toward an 18-foot pole. So again, when in doubt, draw a little picture of it. It'll help you out. Okay. Five feet tall. They're walking towards an 18-foot pole. Find the rate at which the length of the person's shadow is changing when the person is 30 feet away from the pole and walking at a constant speed of six feet per second. Draw it up, label it out, talk with your neighbor, come up with a situation and see how much you can do without me. Okay, see what you can do. We tried one of those yesterday. Try one right now. Go. All right, here we go. Let's see what we can label here. Okay, so at first glance, we've got this. We've got the 18-foot pole. We've got the five-foot do. Okay, what else can I label here? Macy, what else did you put on here? Um, let's see, 30, feet away. 30 feet away, what'd you call that? Uh, X. X, sure. So this is X and that's 30, good. Uh, what else, Emma, what else did you label? Um, DX over DT. Mm -hmm. DX over DT is six feet per second. Thumbs up if you think that's positive six feet per second. Thumbs down if you think it's negative. Renee, why is that going to be negative? Good. He's he's walking towards where he's going. The distance between the guy and where he's walking. It's not necessarily that he's just walking to the left, but it's just that the distance between the two is getting smaller. That's why it's going to be negative. Good. Okay. We've got the shadow or the light coming down. That's going to be the third side of this triangle. Uh, our whole goal is to find the rate at which the length of the person's shadow is changing. So what did you guys call the shadow? Y. Okay, so this is Y. We are trying to find DY over DT. That is the mystery number. That's what we're looking for. Okay, once I've decided that, then I need to solve from here. I need an equation that relates this thing. Okay, is it Pythagorean theorem? No, because I don't care about all three sides. Okay, we're dealing with like little partial side here. I got one of that sides, but not the other one. Do they tell me anything about an angle? then it's not so Katoa, okay? So then our third choice with a right triangle, how do I, what equation am I going to use here? A proportion. I'm going to make a proportion here, okay? A proportion of setting this thing up. So we're looking at the big triangle. I've got this big triangle on the outside that's going to represent the light pole and the guy plus the shadow, okay? Then we also have a smaller triangle. That That is the guy... And that is just his shadow. It's two similar triangles that are built inside of each other. What is something we know about the bigger triangle? 18. The pole is 18 feet long. That is this side right here. In the smaller triangle, what number do we know that relates to that 18? The five feet. The guy is five feet tall. So we can throw a five right there. Then the other thing we care about, we don't care about the hypotenuse side, but we care about the bottom side. On the bottom side of this triangle, if I go all the way across for the big triangle, it'd be X plus Y. Why did I call it X plus Y and not 30 plus Y? Max, X is changing. The distance between that guy is changing. So I don't want to plug in a 30 yet. I want to make it a variable because it's changing. X plus Y is equal to 5 over what? 5 over Y because that is the guy's shadow. That is changing. At this point... We should take a derivative, but you don't want to take it right here because right now it's really ugly, okay? So remember, we're going to cross multiply next and then simplify, then take a derivative. I'm going to give you about another 60 seconds. Finish that thing. There we go. So we're solving. So we cross multiply this out. It's 18y equals 5x plus 5y. I can subtract the 5y. I get 13y equals 5x. Then I'm going to solve. I'm going to take the derivative. Okay, that's my next step here. I'm taking the derivative. Luke, what's the derivative of 13y going to get me? DT, good. And on the other side, it's going to be 5. Yeah, my fault, dx over dt. Good. That's his derivative. Now we're going to plug in what we know. We don't know dy dt, but I do know d dx dt. That is negative 6. So this is negative 30. It's 13 dy over dt. So my answer when I divide by 13 and divide by 13, I get negative, thir negative 30 over 13. And that would be feet 
per second because it's the change in distance over time. Questions on the first one? They don't change them a whole lot. If they do those light problems, they all kind of look the same. They're pretty standard, I would say. Now let's get to some free response questions. Okay, so that first one, good, but not necessarily on every test. These are the ones that we want to be able to do. Oil is leaking from a pipeline on the surface of a lake, and it forms an oil slick where the volume increases at a constant rate of 2,000 cubic centimeters per minute. The oil slick takes the form of a right cylinder with both its radius and height changing with time. This is kind of the dumbest question ever, but it was on the AP exam, so we're going to talk about it. Understand what's happening here. There is a pipe. It's got a crack in it. It is leaking oil into a lake. And what ends up happening is this oil is landing and forming a perfect right cylinder of oil. They measured it. It's perfect. Okay. I know that oil and water don't mix, but I'm guessing they just don't make like coffee cans of oil on water when that happens. Okay. But that's what's happening. That's what they're describing is happening. Everybody good to that point. At the instant when the radius of the oil slick is 100 centimeters and the height is 0.5, the radius is increasing at a rate of 2.5 centimeters per minute. What is the rate of change of the height of the oil slick with respect to time? When you read this, your mind should hurt. It hurts me. Okay. I'm really good at calculus. I would get a five on this AP exam. But when I read that the first time, I blank out. Okay. Every time I'm like, oh, yeah, there's a bunch of words written on that paper that I don't quite grasp. That's why I draw pictures. Okay. That's why after I do everything, I go back and I just start underlining and start labeling stuff because I can do that. Okay. Don't get super distracted by the first time you're reading it and think, oh, that's hard. Yeah, I know. But you're going to do it anyways. Okay. Go through label stuff, see what you can do. Let's. Label some stuff. Umalati, what's something you labeled here? What do you say for the radius here? 100 centimeters. The radius of the oil slick is 100. Isabella, what else did you say? Ooh. Deep cut here. Okay, so when you do this, earlier we did it and we are just like, oh no, it's not there. She said DV over DT, the change in volume over time, was 2,000 cubic centimeters per minute. Where did you find that? Yeah, in the first thing. Good. That Sometimes when you read questions and when we get into more advanced free response questions, you're going to lose that. Okay? But don't forget about that top part. It told me good information up there. Don't lose it. So we got that. Okay? Uh, Madison, what's something else you labeled? DR over DT is 2.5, positive or negative here? Positive. Yep, it's increasing, so it's positive. Uh, missing just height, right? Height is 0.5, we can get that. Height is 0.5. I think that's it. We're trying to figure out what is the rate of change of the height. So our ultimate goal here is to find DH, DT. If we solve that, we win. So I need an equation that deals with volume, radius, and height of a right cylinder. They gave it to us. Thank goodness, because I don't know that formula. So the volume equals pi r squared h is the volume of the thing changing. Yeah, is the radius changing? Yeah, is the height changing? Everything's changing. Okay, it says up here that both its radius and height are changing. So we got to make sure we see that. Cool. Then I'm going to take a derivative. Michael, what's the derivative of volume going to get me? DV over DT. And then over there, I got pi r squared h. What do I need to do to take the derivative of pi r squared h? It is product rule. It is product rule. I've got a first... I've got a second. You cannot be surprised by product rule. That's not, I, as I watch people erase, okay? I know that you're going to miss it. Don't. We got to do product rule. Taylor, talk me through some product rule here. The first, so pi r squared times the derivative of the second, so that's just dh dt plus 
the second. So h times. Mm -hmm. What would the derivative of the first be here? Wonderful. 2 pi r, because that's the derivative of pi r squared, and then dr dt. Everybody good to this point? We had to do product rule. Now, I know this looks ugly, but from here, it's just plugging in. dv dt is 2,000. Pi, the radius, is 100. So it's 100 squared. dh dt, that's the mystery number. The h is 0.5 times 2 times pi times the radius times dr dt, which is 2.5. And I hear a lot of you breaking out calculators. You can do that. But if this is a free response question, I don't even know if I would mess with it. Okay. All I'm trying to do is get dh dt by itself. And if I want to get dh dt by itself, I just got to move everything else over. So I'm going to take this 2000. I'm going to subtract that guy because it's being added so 0 0.5 times 2 pi times 100 times 2.5 and then to get dh dt by itself i would have to divide by this guy pi times 100 squared you could type it in your calculator if you think that's easier to type in your calculator then type it into your calculator to me it's easier just to write it and be done questions on that one all right yeah because it's free response so if it's free response you're good even if it's calculator they'll still they'll still accept a non-simplified answer as long as you're down to just numbers with no letters left you're good number five it says a coffee pot has the shape of a cylinder with a radius of five inches as shown in the figure let h be the depth of the coffee pot let H be the height. The volume of the coffee in the pot is changing at negative 5 pi radical H. So this, mine just printed wrong, negative 5 pi. Radical H, cubic inches per second. Show that dH dt equals negative radical H over 5. So they're not even, they tell you what the answer is. That is the answer. You are trying to figure out what DHDT is and showing that it's that. All you got to do is show your work. Take a second, label stuff. Go. See what you can do. If you can do the whole thing without me, great. But at least label stuff for a few minutes. Will, what's something that you could label here? Um, DV over DT. What did you say DV over DT is? Yep, it's this thing. The volume is changing at this thing right here. So negative 5 pi. Radical H. Canon, what else did you label? Uh, I got the radius. Yep. It's five. Radius is five. Anything else they gave me? No. So they didn't give me very much. That's okay. All right. We've got an equation. we got to talk about the radius of a cylinder and all that stuff. Well, good. They gave it to me. Volume equals pi R squared H. Is the volume changing? Yeah. Volume's changing. I'm pouring coffee in a pot. Is the radius changing? That's not changing here, okay? Because the coffee pot is a shape that is not changing. It is going to be the same coffee pot no matter what, okay? So the radius isn't changing. So before I do anything else, I'm going to plug in my radius of 5, okay? So it's going to be 25 pi h. Is the height of the coffee changing? Yeah, because it's getting more coffee as we go, okay? That is my equation. I don't have to do product rule here because I plug in constants before I take a derivative, right? Does that make sense? And so if you did product rule, you would get the right answer because dh dt wouldn't change or dr dt would be zero, but you don't want to do that necessarily, but you could. Cool. There's that. I'm taking a derivative. So it is dv over dt is equal to 25 pi dh over dt. Everybody good to this point? Then we're going to solve. So we're going to plug in what we know, dv dt. That is negative 5 pi. Square root of h. Super ugly. But who cares? I'm getting dh dt by itself. So what do I need to do here? 
divide by 25 pi, divide by 25 pi. That's canceling. The pi's are canceling. And negative 5 divided by 25, oh, that's negative. Square root of h and 5 over 25 can reduce me all to 5. That is dh over dt. <laughs> well, guess what? That's what we were trying to show. So we did our job because we showed what it was. <coughs> you can get three points. You only need to score 40 points to pass the AP exam. We just scored three on that thing alone, and they told me what the answer was going to be. There are places where you can steal easy points. This is one of them. Okay, sometimes questions are really hard, but if, on something like this, if you know the basic setup, you're already 10% of the way to passing this AP exam on one little baby part of the whole thing. It's a three and a half hour test. That should take you five minutes. One more. The volume of a spherical hot air balloon. So we got a hot air balloon. Yeah, that's a sphere. The hot air balloon expands, so it's getting bigger as we go. The radius of the balloon is modeled by a twice differentiable function of r. The table gives you r prime. The graph is concave down. That doesn't matter to us. And the radius of the balloon is 30 feet when t equals 5. Find the rate of change of the volume of the balloon with respect to time. Indicate units of measure. Read it. Label it. See what you can do with your neighbor. Go. Here we go. So as we look at this thing, Jacob, what's something that you labeled here? R is 30. It says the radius of the balloon is 30 feet. What's something else here, Alana? What else did you label? Um, sorry, You're okay. Um, the volume of okay, so the volume, is that what we're looking for? Yep, find the rate of the change of the volume. So we are trying to find dv over dt. Good. Can Yep, give it to me. Dr over dt. How did you, what did you get for dr over dt? Mm, don't no not on this one. It's two. Yeah, don't, I think you overthought that one. Don't overthink it. So as we look at this, this right here is r prime. Okay, so that's my derivative. That's dr dt. When do I want to look at that chart? F5, because it says right here when t equals 5. So really all I'm doing to this chart is going right there. That's kind of strange that we're using a chart to do it, but it's okay. This is a multi-level question, so this is just part B. So I'm guessing on part A and part C, they gave you something a little bit different. Okay, but for this one, we just want the 2. And so that's 2, and that's in feet per minute if we want to get crazy and get some units here. But do pay attention that we want to indicate units at the end. If you don't indicate units and they tell you to, you would lose points. And that's easy. Okay, I think that's everything. We've got our equation. Volume equals four-thirds pi r cubed. Is the, the volume and the radius are changing. So I don't have any constants. I'm just taking a derivative. dv over dt. Multiply by three. So it's just four pi r squared dr over dt. So I get four times pi times 30 squared times two. That's my answer. I do need to include units. It's dv over dt. So what do you think my units are going to be here if it's dv, or the change in volume over time? It's feet cubed per, what are we at, minute? Okay, feet cubed per minute. And the reason for that is this is feet squared, and then this is feet per minute. And so when you multiply that together, it gets you feet cubed per minute.